Dear students, welcome to geography class. Today we are going to deal with a new chapter major landforms of the earth. In the beginning, let us see what is the schema of the chapter, which means we are going to see the chapter in brief. See first topic that we are going to deal is the formation of landforms how these uh, landforms are being formed and under the topic we are going to deal with two process processes called endogenous process and exogenous process second topic is mountains and in that we will deal with the fault mountains block mountains volcanic mountains and finally we will see what are the importance of mountains and our next topic is valleys and in the topic we will deal with the importance of valleys too again we will see another landforms that is plateaus and finally in that we will see importance of plateaus also and finally we will deal with plains in that we will deal importance of planes and also we make a analysis study how these landforms are related with the people of that area of that region so this is the schema of the chapter and today in this session we are going to deal these topics formation of the landforms endogenous processes exogenous processes and we will stop with mountains and in the coming sessions we will be dealing with the rest of the chapter so now let's move on see our earth is not a plain surface it has got lots of uneven uh, surfaces at many places right you must have observed that and this gave rise to many physiographic divisions such as uh, mountains plateaus plains etc so we need to learn about these divisions these landforms are the outcome of two kinds of processes the first process which we are going to deal with is a endogenic process and secondly we will also deal with exogenic processes so due to these two process we have uneven terrain on the surface of the earth so keep in your mind that due to endogenic and exogenic processes we have different landforms on the surface of the earth so we are going to see the first causes of the formation of uh, different landforms on the surface of the earth endogenic process this term itself gives an idea where it takes place it takes place within the earth endogenic process see endogenic processes are also called tectonic processes and the forces act from inside the earth so i have told it gives you some kind of clue the word endogenic uh, gives us the clues that is inside the earth endogenic which means uh, something uh, within right so inside from the inside the earth these movements are there which means uh, we know that there are different layers of the earth and beneath the earth the lots of movements take place of uh, tectonic plates so that's why it is also known as tectonic process yeah we further explain say they occur suddenly and cause upliftment and subsidence of the earth crust so it happens at the core like in the crust there happens lots of movements so it happens a lot of uh, uh, upliftment and the same way subsidence which means uh, something is being lifted and something is uh, gone down so different movements are taking within the earth okay i give you a picture as example see within the earth there happens lots of movements so this is what called endogenic process endogenic means within the earth it is also known as tectonic process 
and further it is also known as internal process since it is happening within the earth yes now we will see what are the after effects after effects or the results this process leads to folding faulting volcanic eruption and earthquakes though it happens these processes take place within the earth the reactions or the results can be observed uh, on the surface of the earth see here we have an example of a, a volcanic eruption so endogenic processes one of the causes for the formation of different landforms on the surface i hope you are uh, picking up the concept something happening within the earth which is called internal movements or internal process which is can we can be also called as a tectonic process so it's also called as a endogenic process due to this process there can be some differences or formation of a new landforms on the surface of the earth i hope this concept is clear now we are going to see what is exogenic process the term itself tell us exogenic which means outside or on the surface of the earth it is also called external process see external this term is important exogenic or external process okay so it happens on the surface of of the earth okay on the surface of the earth so that is the difference here it can be either running water or moving ice wind or waves anything can be called as exogenic process so due to this process also there can be a lot so for changes uh, in on the surface of the earth see these forces act on the surface on the earth and helps in weathering which means breaking down of the uh, rocks into uh, small particles and erosion you or you are already familiar with the concept of soil erosion and and so on and the transportation of a uh, transportation and deposition on, of weathered and eroded materials so uh, it will carry all the silt and sediments and deposit somewhere else It's these kind of forces right so this is what exogenic process i have given you an example this is a running water example for running water which is a river or a stream so it will carry a lots of a silt or a sediments from its origin and deposit somewhere else that causes a kind of a change on the surface of the earth so this is the second reason for the formation of the different landforms on the earth i hope these two processes are clear one is endogenic process which happens within the earth or inside the earth and second one is exogenic process which happens uh, outside the earth or on the surface of the earth so this is something external forces okay so these two process cause a lots of a change on the surface of the earth that's why we have a different landforms on the earth now we're going to learn about one of the major landforms of the earth that is mountains we all are familiar with this topic mountains at least we have seen mountain right yes a mountain is a large mass of land that rises to a great height which is much above the surrounding area so we have seen mountain so this is a definition of the mountain uh, it's a large mass of land that is we need to take this part in consideration a uh, large mass of land that rises to a great height it, it, it has got a great height yes and which is much above the surrounding area apart from surrounding area it has gone high with a large mass of land and that rises there and one more term is there that is peak which means top of the mountain it can be either sharp or rounded but this top of the mountain is called peak 
and sides slope down steeply to the base so that it has got a peak and also it has got a sharp edges slopes down to the base so that is what mountain is i hope you have a, a concept of a mountain in your mind at least now otherwise just make it now uh, like this picture see here you have a peak you see that peak over here and a steep uh, slope slopes down to the foot right to the base so this is what um, the concept of mountain is here it is a, uh, a sharp edged mountain it's not a round edge but rather a sharp edged mountains so they generally occur occur in a long chains but here it is uh, it is there as a, a single landmass it can also occur as a long chains like in our uh, Himalaya that is what we are going to see next to see Himalaya Himalaya Himalayas have three major ranges it's a, it has got a three major ranges so it is a, such a lengthy um, long range is there for Himalayas and there are three different names for each range so first one is Himadri that is greater Himalaya that is the top of the mountain like the top layer is called Himadri um, Himajal is the second layer on the middle or it is called middle Himalayas and finally Shivalik or the lower Himalaya these are the three different uh, ranges of Himalaya so don't worry about this one you will learn uh, about Himalayas and different ranges in higher classes in very detailed manner so at least keep in your mind that uh, there are two kinds of mountains can be there there, there can be uh, a long range of mountains or a mountain can be a single landmass but that also there are two uh, possibility for mountains for being so next point see this is another example Himalaya is one of the example for a, a chain of mountains and this is Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa this is an example for a single landmass here it is uh, a single landmass is there okay so these are two examples for a uh, mountains different types of mountains so, so again types of mountains are coming there are three types of mountains are there fold mountains are there block mountains are there and volcanic mountains are there about that we are going to deal in the next video class so uh, please go through this uh, lesson once again and be safe at home and thank you we will meet in the next video